welcome back to Marvel Live. We are back here on the couch with a brand new guest, Jody Hauser. Hello, everybody. Who's written all the things. Uh, many of the things, yes. Many, many, many of the things. Spider-Man Renew Your Vows. Oh, yeah. Just ended an amazing, an amazing series. Uh, that that was so much fun. I I just adored writing Peter and MJ and Annie, yeah, and Annie. the uh, spider fam, as yeah. I like to call them. Yeah. And just, you know, showing a lovely, loving family that, you know, they have their problems, of course, because everyone does. But at the heart of it, they love each other and just want to take care of each other and also make really terrible dad jokes. Because... <laughs> You what know, else would Peter do as a dad but make really, really painfully bad dad jokes? There is never enough dad jokes in the world. I am I personally a that. big fan of dad jokes. I clearly am as well. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a couple other projects that you're currently working on right now and into the future. Uh, yes, for fans of Renew Your Vows, you want to see more of Annie and her family. Uh, Spider Girls is coming uh, out that ties into Spider Geddon, uh, and, and Peter and MJ will be hanging out for the first issue at least uh, before she teams up with uh, some other universe counterparts to uh, deal with the shenanigans going on across uh, all the universes. I always get excited with anyone who's talking about Spider Man says hanging out because in my head it's the best joke ever. Even if they didn't mean it that way. I actually didn't mean that one this time, <laughs> for once. Now, now, Spider Girls are incorporating May Parker, Anya Corazon, Annie May Parker. Those are three huge Spider Women characters. And uh, as someone who used to read a lot of MC2 stuff, uh, getting to write Mayday is wonderful. Well, and, yeah. uh, and we had sort of established in Renew Your Vows uh, what happened to the child that would have been May in that universe, and yeah. it's not a happy story, yeah, so the there's cemetery, definitely going to be a little bit of drama there with yeah. Mayday showing up in that reality. So uh, yeah. if you like the family drama side of uh, Spider-Man Renew Your Vows, uh, you'll hopefully like this, too. Yeah. Now, when it comes to balancing all the Parker's family in, 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 in one comic, in one issue, how do you do that? I mean, to me, the... The main thing is that they are a family unit. You know, it's like you're, you different issues will showcase different characters and focus on you know their internal thoughts and what they're going through. But at the end of the day, it's a book about a family, and you know it all started with Spider-Man and Peter, obviously. But you know, uh, Spinneret and Spider Spiderling, as she hates to be called. She hates Spiderling. Uh, you know, they it's they've become such a core unit, uh, and so just always wanting to you know maintain that. Uh, coherency between the three of them yeah. and that, you know, they disagree, but at the end of the, the day, they're on the same page and literally on the same page in, in comic. One of my favorite scenes was when Spiderling and Peter were arguing about how he's working at the school and Mary Jane's like, there's a there's a crime happening, guys. I need to, Someone's got to do something. And they're still <laughs> arguing and she just goes and do, saves it. Yeah, Hilarious. you know, uh, she's, she's the one who will make sure the stuff gets done in the family. <laughs> yes. So with all of these amazing spider people that you're dealing with and these really cool storylines like how how do you work well I will caveat and say this is a social question uh, how do you work with your artists I mean a lot of that is thanks to the great editors I work with I mean the artists are you know they're coming in after the script is already written generally for the issue uh, so I'm on all the emails when art pages are coming in and when colors are coming in. But really, it's uh, thanks to the wonderful editors who make sure that things get done and that everyone's turning in their work on time and that everyone's in contact. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, just having the, that them as the point person really on the project, yeah. uh, that we wouldn't be able to get anything made without editors, basically. <laughs> and so with all these different Spidey people, is there like a process that you have in getting in their heads and like talking from these different various voices? Um, I mean, I think just especially going back and rereading uh, the issues I've already written and just knowing where they are in their headspace at that moment and, you know, making sure, you know, if someone was really upset the last issue, they're not just going to be super bouncy and happy. You want to have that sort of flow be between the characters and their mindsets and the things that have been affecting them in previous issues still are until they're resolved. So going from Spider-Man to Star Wars... How do you transition? The Star Wars Age of the Republic, how, would, how do you transition to that? Uh, I mean, loving Star Wars a lot really <laughs> helps. Uh, I, I'm someone who's been a big fan of the Clone Wars animated series, which so glad it's coming back. Coming back. Uh, but getting to deal with some of these characters, especially like Qui-Gon, who has so little material mm -hmm. 
about him. And Count Dooku, who I just find to be one of the fascinating, most fascinating characters yeah. of any of the eras. You know, someone who left the Jedi Order and went bad, but no one really no seemed why. to realize it. Yeah. And they still trusted him, even though, you know, they had no idea what he'd really been up to since he left. Uh, and Jango Fett, who I, I believe is the superior of the Fets. Uh, <laughs> uh, don't get mad, Internet. No, uh, look. She's he, like, you can at me about no, look, that. Jango Fett fought, like, dudes with lightsabers. Boba kind of yep. got shot by a blind guy. Pretty epic. Jango Fett forever. Jango Fett for life. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Now, when you're writing comics outside the Marvel Universe. Do you pull inspiration from the Marvel Universe when you work on those? Um, that's, that's actually a really interesting question. I feel, um, especially for the Star Wars stuff, you know, there is that heroic element, especially to the Jedi, and, you know, the Sith are very much like supervillains. So I think there's some of the tonal similarities between the two. At the end of the day, they're all very, you know, at the heart of them, fantasy stories about yeah. good versus evil. So, I mean, I think some of the core elements there are the same, but, you know, in general, I try not to uh, stray too far into one or the other. Although sometimes, you know, it's fun to have superheroes make a Star Wars reference. Oh, my God, yes. So I love the fact that you are clearly, like, you love what you do, but you love the subject matter even before you did it. Like, how did you get into your fandom? Like, what was your start into knowing that this is, this is it, this is what I'm going to do for a living? Well, I mean, as a kid, I was really into, like, the X-Men animated series and Batman the animated series, and those were really my gateways into buying comics because I was seeing these superheroes on TV. Yeah. And I also loved reading, so the fact that you could go to a bookstore and pick up, you know, like, novelizations of storylines and then comics of, you know, the characters you were seeing on TV, that was really the sort of gateway drug into comics for me. And uh, as someone who knew most of my life I wanted to be a writer... Uh, it just sort of, I found myself on that path eventually, and I sometimes I think I, you know, it was silly that it's like, you love comics, you love writing, why not put the two together? That it, you know, kind of took me a while to get to that place. Yeah. Wow. I want to look ahead still with Spider-Girls, if that's okay, because I want to know so much about it. Um, what themes will you be working with with that series? I mean, I think, uh, and it seems a little silly to say this in terms of Spider-Man, because it's such... Uh, you know, a huge part of Peter, but just the idea of responsibility that when you decide you're going to be a hero, uh, there's so much that, in, that comes with that that you're automatically, you know, have to carry. And for Annie, as we've seen her grow through Renew Your Vows, you know, she's at this point now where she is going to be a major player in a major event. Yeah. And it's sort of, is she ready for that responsibility? Like, how do you prepare for that? Yeah. And how do you sort of, like, come to terms with the power that you have that you might not be fully aware of the extent of it? Yeah. One thing that I love that Peter and MJ always say is, we raised her well. And you see that repeatedly in Renew Your Vows, how she deals with those two characters that uh, get the chemicals from, uh, from Osborne. And oh, it's, yeah. like, it's like, oh, my gosh, like, what is she going to do in this situation? And she acts like an adult. You're like, she is so responsible. Yeah, and I love the idea that, you know, she's always been, like, not necessarily the sidekick, but kind of the sidekick for her parents. And that's the moment where she gets to be, like, the one who knows the most what she's doing. And yeah she kind of gets to take on sidekicks of her own and be the mentor figure for once. So, oh. I mean, I like the fact that her rebelling against her parents was going off and basically being responsible for other people. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that to me is like something that's that would come very much from both of her parents, you know, yeah. who yeah. that's who they are and that's who they taught her to be. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's so cool, but also so relatable. I think that's the power of comic books. Like, what you saw in the X-Men animated series, what you're now doing in your writing, like, I, I feel like there's going to be a little girl or there's going to be a little boy. There's, there's going to be a little person that goes in and that's their first comic book they pick up and they really have an incredible story to look forward to. Thank you. And honestly, like bringing new fans into comics is one of my favorite things. Yeah, that's awesome. That's amazing. Now, as well, I want, to, I want to talk about a scene in Renew Your Vows that I loved. I feel like you really like Renew Your Vows. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and that's why I can't wait for Spider-Girl. Spider-Girl. Um, there's, a, there's a scene that Osborne... Just, just got like rescued, if you will, by Spiderling, and you have a moment where she's rescuing him, and there's, there's a chance where, you know, she could, she, she has a, a choice, if you will, of like, what do I do in this situation? One of my friends from school is just turned into someone. Should I take her to the cops, or should I just let her other friend calm her down? 
What was like going through and like riding through that through Annie's mind of choosing friendship over the law? I mean, I think I, I mean my idea behind it was, you know, this is sort of the choice that her parents have to make with her. They have to choose when they get to the point where they can trust her to make the right choice on her own. And whether she realized it or not, that's basically what she had to do. You know, she had to take her friend's word that he could talk this girl down and that, you know, they could get through this without anyone getting hurt. Yeah. Uh, so I think it was her like weighing that decision without realizing that that's what her parents have done with her yeah. her whole life. Oh man, it's so good. Well, thank you so, so very much.